Welcome to Dee Dee's Diner. Can I start you off with something to drink? Yes, please. May I have a Forerunner Coke? Is Pathfinder Pepsi okay? I guess. This is a wild Purgle Burgle. Purgle Burgle. Submit, how do I get on OCR? Submit, you click this button, there's a form. <laughs> Thank you for website. Hey, Mr. Regular, what is the most boring car you've ever driven? Here it is. It's weird that a company which made the R32, 350Z, GTR, and all those Datsuns could make the automotive equivalent of a cloudy Wednesday. An auto box Corolla is more fun than this because it's lighter. This is a 4x4, and I feel like I'm in middle school church. Middle school church is what you're imprisoned into around age 11 or 12. It's when all the extra church overlaps. What happens is confirmation class starts at around 7.30 a.m. and goes until 8.30, which means you need to get up at 7, which means you need to get up at 6.50 because you got to put on your church clothes and squeeze your feet into shoes that your growing feet no longer fit into. Anyway, you get done with confirmation class at 8.30 and walk a few doors down in the church for Sunday school. You just got done one class, now you go to another church class from 8.30 to 9.30. And then once Sunday school is over, you get to stand in the narthex and be good from 9.30 to 9.45. And then you get in, then you get, get in the, you get to go into the regular church, the adult church, which is you sitting in a pew from 9.45 until 11 a.m., and being good. You think you're going home now to Oscar Mayer sandwiches and Captain Skyhawk? No, you're not. Now you have to wait for all the parents to finish their stand by the door conversations. You're in a container where time doesn't exist. And from a kid's perspective, that moment will last forever unless you start squirming your way toward the door. And that's how I feel driving a Pathfinder. I just want to aim for storm drains in this thing, just to make my drive colorful. It's like this vehicle is a low poly count PS1 game. No characteristic is any more discernible from another. All right, fine. A Pathfinder feels higher quality than a Ford Explorer, and it's slightly smaller than an Explorer, meaning slightly more maneuverable. It's faster than the Explorer. And I like the honest, straight-pull gear shifter. The shorter-than-average wheelbase of the Nissan Pathfinder also makes it hop over cement slabs. You know, on state routes where they like to use cement instead of macadam. Ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. It's very indecisive with its overdrive. Even with only two people in the car, it's fourth gear, third gear, fourth gear, third gear, fourth gear, third gear. So in that, it kind of feels like a forerunner, but not as smooth, like dollar store Fig Newtons versus the genuine article. Nissan Pathfinder. It's like going to a sleepover at a friend's house and being served crispy hexagons for breakfast instead of crispix. Pathfinder. Are we flying American? No. Allegiant. Are we flying into Orlando? No. Orlando Sanford. Is this a Kenwood? No. Boss Audio. Is this a Discman? No. Koss. Is that a Snap-on Ratchet? No. Amazon Basics. Nissan Pathfinder. A bait-and-switch experience. Because you look at the bland exterior and think it's a red herring for performance that it's clearly got tucked away until you hit highway speeds and find that, like an NBC show set in Chicago, it's just another crossover. It acts like a forerunner rival, but only because it wants to be part of a club to which it wouldn't normally have access. This is the automotive equivalent of a guy that bullied you in high school who now pretends he was an outsider too? because he realizes it's fashionable to have a bad time in high school. This Pathfinder features the 3.5 liter V6 engine designation VQ35DE. This is the naturally aspirated engine that's been used in the Murano, 
the Infiniti QX60, and the stock engine in last week's Infiniti G35 Coupe, the one that's not there anymore. We found conflicting power figures that suggest anywhere from 228 horsepower to 311 uh, and like 22 miles per gallon. I, I, and I can say this is sure as hell not getting within coming distance of 300 horsepower. The transmission is a four-speed automatic, and that's all I have to say about that. Gage got this at the end of January when it had 126,000 miles, and he's since added 5,000 more. Other than the radio, everything is stock, including the engine. Which shouldn't be an issue, except this engine tends to have a host of issues that become more immediate the closer you get to 150,000. Since that's supposedly the service lifespan of the three timing chains, valve clearance is also supposed to be adjusted every 60,000 miles. Looking into it, other problems include high oil consumption and a catalytic converter that's sensitive to fuel quality. Of course, you can resolve low compression issues by swapping in high-flow catalytic converters. But then you're still stuck with problems like the production of ceramic dust, which is also not an uncommon byproduct of this engine's operation. And that dust can screw with the piston rings, among other components. Typically, the VQ35DEs were equipped with CVTC, which is Continuously Variable Timing Control. Wow. On the intake valves, in addition to multi-port fuel injection and Nissan Direct Ignition System, which is coil-on plug, VQ35DE, sponsored by a meeting that could have been an email. For the first generation, it was brought to market as a two-door, body-on-frame SUV to challenge the Chevy Blazer, the Jeep Cherokee, and the Toyota 4Runner. The Nissan used the Pathfinder to replace the Bushmaster, which was also Trent Falkenrath's self-chosen college nickname. What you see here is the second generation, as the 2002 model year was the first in which the Pathfinder was no longer marketed in Japan. Due to the lost decade financial decline in the country caused by high interest rates in the midst of a credit crunch, which sounds like a breakfast cereal formulated by accountants for accountants. This was also the generation at which it became unibody, before returning to body on frame for the third gen, and then back to unibody for the fourth and fifth. But this is from 2002. Do you know how low the barrier of entry to popularity was in 2002? You could just step over the pile of silly bands and skater boy CD singles and take your place at the summit of Mount Relevance until the new Creed album dropped. It's uninspired, it's lazy, it's the car for the man who likes his wife's family more than he likes his wife. It's a car that suffers from the high expectations, however fair or unfair, of a company that has a custom one to expect a quality product. It's as if they started with the idea to make something capable of challenging its competitors and then just gave up halfway, like a husband trying to buy the roses but forgetting to book the restaurant. You can't leave a bookmark in the middle of a relationship. You have to finish the book. Nissan Pathfinder. The official car of chaperoning a date between two Fallout Boy t-shirts. It cultivates the notion that nothing really matters. Because how could it? You're in a car more uninspired than reaction videos. It exists to disappoint. Like dating someone who doesn't lift a finger unless it's to move goalposts. The Nissan Pathfinder is one of those cars that endures by doing the bare minimum and doing it just well enough to not draw any attention to itself. And I suppose there's a kind of virtue to that. The Pathfinder knows what it is, and it seems like the people who drive this car around tend to like it for what it is rather than in spite of it. If the Nissan Pathfinder were a person, it'd be Moby. Adequate, but not really exciting except for the first track of play. It's not Daft Punk, but everybody in the circle jerk can still agree that porcelain is all right. And listening to Nissan fanboys tell me how the Pathfinder is great and important, that makes me feel like I'm sitting in a class that doesn't count toward graduation, like SAT prep. It was taught by the French teacher, and she paced back and forth and blustered about how important this class was, but there was no mustard in her words. No wind. No emotion. The Nissan Pathfinder wants you to believe that you made a good choice. This is a great off-roader and an exciting vehicle. But the lethargic, detuned VQ engine, the RPG builder interior, it feels so empty. If you 
need a vehicle, and you came across a fresh one like Gage did, then fine. In the absence of transportation, a Pathfinder is a dreary medical campus turned Valentinian when the doctor told you that the test came back negative. <laughs>